Hello, everyone, and welcome to VM Blog's expert interview series. And today we're being joined by Avi Friedman, the CEO and co-founder of Kentic. Welcome to the show. Thanks, David. I'm a big fan of uh, of the site. Uh, as I said, uh, it's uh, uh, one of my biggest sites to keep up about what's going on in uh, infrastructure, IT, uh, observability industry. I certainly appreciate that. And uh, it's really nice to hear. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I guess for the folks who are watching right now, if you wouldn't mind, maybe just give a, a quick overview of Kentic. Absolutely. So Kentic is a nine-year-old company. Uh, Kentic means visible or understood in Yiddish. Uh, and that's what we've been focusing on is we built an observability style platform in 2014 that keeps everything modern, has APIs. And we've been coming at it from the infrastructure up to the application as opposed to the more traditional sort of application down. So uh, we sell to enterprise service providers, the people that build the infrastructure, the people that use it to deliver the bits, started with the internet, moving into data center cloud, to Kubernetes, doing performance testing up into application testing, uh, bringing it all together in one uh, in, in one platform for uh, what are usually infrastructure or security professionals uh, buying and using Kentic. Now, I'm glad to have you here. You're an industry expert. So maybe if you uh, wouldn't mind just kind of telling us, uh, you know, what is network observability and how does it fit within the broader observability landscape? Yeah. So uh, it's interesting because they actually the observability term uh, as uh, the observability industry sort of has leaned on came from networking of electrical networks. So network observability was the ability to reason about something inside that electrical network by observing the outputs. Uh, and that is, you know, sort of what has been seized on as the as the idea of observability and and uh, and how a lot of the modern platforms were built. And a lot of those uh, platforms are, are focused, as I said, more on the application down to the server sort of compute storage infrastructure levels, but not as much the network. How does the network compose? How is it connected? And we came at it from that perspective, having a background there, uh, and also in databases, distributed systems. Uh, I spent 10 years at Akamai. So um, all these things are obviously connected in modern infrastructure, but a lot of those platforms take network metrics as this thing and VPC flow logs from the cloud as that thing and NetFlow and SFlow from the network as this thing and performance testing as that thing and aren't really trying to bring one hybrid view of what your infrastructure from on-prem to cloud is. And that's that's th those are the professionals that we're dealing with. As I said, they're, they're in IT, they could be in security, and they're running a global estate of things which are multi-cloud and into on-prem uh, using the internet in between and SaaS and, and need to get visibility of that. So our focus right now is integrating. We integrate with, uh, you know, uh, most tightly with New Relic, with Sumo Logic, and of course, Influx Prometheus. Uh, you know, we have a telemetry pipeline for feeding these other platforms. And we're very focused on that infrastructure layer uh, right now in, in most of our product suite. Now, thinking about your products, you're announcing uh, Kentic Cube here at uh, KubeCon Chicago, which I understand will help Kubernetes users quickly troubleshoot issues. Uh, can you tell us how it works and maybe what the particular challenges are for Kubernetes users? Sure. So uh, Kentic Cube is fed by an eBPF agent, um, and we have a pretty flexible ingest, but from the network side, a lot of those agents uh, really only see traffic if it terminates on the kernel. A lot of our customers also run VMs and other things on the hosts, which aren't all containerized yet. Uh, so we can provide that mixed view, but where it is Kubernetes with, you know, pod process ID, you know, all the enrichment that you get from running inside the system, take it. We also scrape the Kubernetes metrics, combine it sort of like we do on the cloud so that we can show people topology. We are uh, traffic focused as well as, you know, looking at the metrics of the Kubernetes estate and the health of it, and then showing traffic and performance both within the cluster externally and then sort of uh, what we specialize in is not only the kubernetes but also how is it getting across between clusters whether it's on premises multi cloud you know on on the internet or both so it's not trying to do absolutely everything with with the uh, kubernetes management but for focus on the traffic and performance of that traffic uh, as it meets the application and then down to the infrastructure uh, that's the focus of kentiku now you said uh, Kentic can see how network traffic flows between clusters, between clouds, and, and even on-prem. Do you 
do you think it's important for enterprises to have this holistic view? And because it seems more and more companies are trying to just build everything on Kubernetes and keep as much as possible with, within the cluster. Yeah, I'll give you an analog. Uh, I heard an analyst say uh, that uh, networking won't be needed because the service meshes are going to talk to each other directly. I mean, ultimately, that needs to turn into packets that get transported somehow. So we do have a contrarian view. I, I mean, our, our product is based on eBPF observation of traffic and enrichments. But just looking at the network from the inside of the Ethernet of the server only doesn't help you when packets aren't getting where they're supposed to or where there's performance issues. What we're seeing in enterprise architecture is, yeah, there's an awful lot of components of applications that are running entirely inside clusters. But it's the same thing as availability zones, uh, you know, in a region in, say, Amazon. If you want HA, you're probably not going to be running the entirety of your application in one cluster. Most of our customers aren't running, you know, sort of one logical cluster that's multiple zones. There's service meshes and other things, but, uh, you know, you are going to sometimes need to get outside that cluster. And when it, when you do, if there's issues, someone needs to be able to figure out what's going on. So that's what we're seeing in enterprise architecture, at least. Now, you mentioned earlier, Kentic was founded nearly a decade ago. So I'm curious if you wouldn't mind exploring how you feel about the changes in cloud and modern architectures that's taken place over the years. And what do you think about the the hype that's going on with uh, within Kubernetes right now? So I'll give you a couple of takes on that. Um, I think that the move to orchestration um, and everyone really understanding the concept of statelessness and ephemerality and, you know, um, uh, infrastructure really as code and as uh, cattle, not pets. I think that's awesome. Um, Kubernetes itself has been a great solution to standardize on. It's probably got, you know, maybe a little bit more complexity, uh, you know, than, uh, than you know, it, it requires... Uh, a suite of vendors to help people manage and and it is designed for some of these larger infrastructures, which is why we've seen some of the, the simpler Kubernetes distributions out there. But, uh, you know, we think it's great because especially, you know, you need an observability platform that doesn't do roll-ups and that can do enrichment and understand the, the breadth of this and, and deal with really fast-changing infrastructure. So, uh, you know, we could see not as much Kubernetes, but cloud was, people were having struggles really understanding the idea of uh, of statelessness and ephemerality. And I think Kubernetes has really helped people adopt that. Uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, have been talking with Urs at uh, Google uh, before I started Kentex. So, you know, call it the early 20 teens. And he said, Avi, one of these days containers are going to be big. And I didn't really get it. And, uh, you know, I was like, yeah, I know Solaris zones and all those things. And, and uh, but yeah, it was the management of that that was uh, that was the key. And it's great. We have something to standardize on and that, you know, gives us a, a data source and a place for people to run their infrastructure uh, and applications. Well, Avi, this has been great. I know uh, you're busy and uh, you've got a lot of things going on. So I really appreciate you taking time out to speak with the uh, VM blog audience today. Absolutely. Thank you, David. And thank you, VM blog. As I said, uh, it's a great source of news. And uh, yes, a lot of time it's I'm paying attention to what the other vendors in the space are doing, but um, a lot of good info. And uh, uh, thank you again. And, and before I let you go, uh, I know you know, you're here at KubeCon. So where, how can attendees of the show find you uh, here? And, and and for those folks who aren't here, uh, how can they find out more about Kentic and, you know, some of the things that we talked about today? Sure. Um, so at KubeCon, we're at booth B23. Uh, we're Kentic.com. I'm Avi Friedman on, uh, with two E's on Twitter and LinkedIn. Uh, we are in Chicago, so if you don't see me at the show, I might be at Greek Island Restaurant or otherwise in Greek Town or perhaps at Fogo uh, de Chal, uh downtown. So I'm going to have to hang out with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Avi, again, thank you. I appreciate it. And I look forward to, uh, you know, talking with you uh, again. Thanks. I look forward to it as well. All right.